Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to crochet this little cardigan sweater, coat, or jacket for baby boys and girls between zero and three months. You can easily make it smaller or bigger from a newborn size and up to 12 months. Down here in the information box, I'll go ahead and leave you some information on how you can easily make it smaller or bigger, so be sure to check that out. Now, as always, if you prefer a written pattern, check out my Etsy shop. I'll leave the link to my Etsy shop in the information box below. Thank you so much for your support. Now, to make this little sweater, this is the yarn that I used. It's DK weight yarn, but you can also use any number three yarn or a ply. I used exactly one skein, which is 100 grams of this yarn, to make the zero to three month size. You will also need five buttons. These buttons are 12 millimeter size, but you can also use 13 millimeter size. Okay, let's get started. And thank you so much for watching. To begin, I'll be using this 3.5 millimeter crochet hook, and today I'm using this number three yarn. You can also use any DK weight yarn or a ply. At the beginning of the video, I showed you the yarn that I'm using, and I told you how much yarn we're going to need for the size that we're making. To begin, I have 46 chains. This chain without stretching, it's measuring about 9.25 inches, which is about 23.5 centimeters. So here, to begin, we're going to start on the fourth chain from the hook. And the stitch that I'm going to use to make this little sweater is a variation of the herringbone stitch. So here, to begin, I'm going to yarn over and into this fourth chain, I'm going to grab a loop. I have three loops on the hook. Pass this loop through the first loop, grab a loop and pass through one, grab a loop and pass through two. Again, I'm going to yarn over and into the next chain, I'm going to make the stitch. So grab a loop, pass this loop through the first loop, grab a loop and pass through one, grab a loop and pass through two. Here I'm going to make a total of six, which is going to be for the front panel. Again, yarn over, insert your hook into the next chain, grab a loop, pass this loop through one, grab a loop, pass through one, grab a loop, and pass through two. Now remember that if you click up here, there's a little gear, you can always slow the tutorial if it's going too fast for you. Again, yarn over, insert your hook into the next chain, grab a loop, pass through one loop, grab a loop, pass through one, grab a loop, and pass through two. I have five, including the three chains. These three chains count as one stitch, so that's two, three, four, five. I'm going to make a total of six, like I said. There, I have six stitches. Now, chain one. Now, this chain here represents the first corner, and I have the first front panel. Now, into the next chain, I'm going to make another stitch. So, yarn over, grab a loop, pass this stitch through one loop, pass through one, pass through two. Yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, grab a loop, pass through one, pass through one, pass through two. Here I'm going to make a total of 10, which is going to be for the shoulder or what is going to be the sleeves. So yarn over again and into the next chain repeat the same thing for this stitch pattern. Ten. There's 10 stitches. Now chain one. Here's the second corner. I recommend that you place a stitch marker. I'm going to do that after I'm done with this row. So you can place a stitch marker here where we have the chain to mark the corners. This will be the second corner. Now I'm going to make a total of 12 herringbone stitches here. So into the next chain, make the first one. Oops. And continue until you have 12 of these stitches for the back side. 
I'll come back and show you what we need to do next. I finished making these 12 stitches for the back side. Now I'm going to chain one and into the next chain right here, I'm going to make my next stitch. Now make sure to place a stitch marker. Like I said, I've already placed some stitch markers on mine here. And as you can see, I decided to change yarn color. It's the same weight yarn. Um, I wasn't going to have enough to make the sweater in the other light gray color. Now for the second sleeve, I'm going to make a total of 10. I already have one. So into the next chain, make another stitch. That's two. I have 10 stitches for the second sleeve. Now I'm going to chain one, and here we should be left with six stitches, which is for the second front panel. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So finish this row by making these last six stitches, and then I'll come back and show you what we need to do next. I'm here at the end of the first row. I finished this row by making these last six stitches here for the second front panel. At the end of this first row, I have a total of 44 stitches. For this row, this is what we did. We started on the fourth chain from the hook. These three chains here counts as the first stitch, and then I did five more. So I have six stitches here, then I chained one. This is the first corner, and then I did 10 for the front panel. Then I did one chain, that's the second corner, and then I did 12 for the back side. I did one chain for the third corner, and then I did 10 for the second sleeve. Then I chained one for the fourth corner, and I finished here with these last six stitches for the second front panel. So that's a total of 44 stitches at the end of this first row. Now for the second row, I'm going to chain two. Now these two chains will never count as a stitch. So here, to begin on top of the first stitch right here, I'm going to make a herringbone stitch. So yarn over, insert your hook on top of the first stitch, grab a loop, pass this loop through the first loop on the hook, grab a loop and pass through one, grab a loop and pass through two. Here I'm going to make one herringbone for each one of these six stitches. I already have one, There, I have six herringbone stitches. I have the first corner, remove the stitch marker. Now inside this corner, I'm going to make a herringbone stitch, chain one, and one more in this same chain space. This is how we're going to increase on each corner. You're going to make two separated by a chain. Return the stitch marker to mark the corner, and now you're going to continue and make one herringbone stitch on each one of these 10 stitches. So beginning on top of the next one, make a herringbone stitch, so that's one. I have the next corner, remove the stitch marker, and in this corner you're going to make a herringbone stitch, chain one, and then one more. There, that's how you're going to work each one of the corners. Return the stitch marker to mark the corner here in the chain space, and then continue along and make these 12 herringbone stitches until you come to the next corner where you're going to do the same thing I did here, and then work the next 10 for the second sleeve, then work the fourth corner, and finish here with the last six stitches for the second front panel. Here at the end on top of the 
third chain, we're going to make the last stitch. Finish this second row, and then I'll come back and show you what we need to do next. I'm here at the end of the second row. Now here at the end, your last stitch is going to be made here into the third chain. Insert your hook there and make the last stitch there. And this is how I finished the second row. At the end of this second row, you should have a total of 52 stitches. Now, starting here, this first front panel, you should have seven stitches. Then we have the first corner from this stitch marker up to this next one. For this first sleeve, you should have 12 stitches. From this stitch marker to the next one, for the back side, you should have 14. From this stitch marker to the next, for the second sleeve, you should have 12 stitches. And here for the second front panel, you should have seven stitches. At the end of each row from here on, we're going to increase by eight stitches. Now, each one of the front panels is going to increase by one stitch. So one on this side and one on this side. For the sleeves, you're going to increase by two. One here and one here, one here and one here. And then for the back side, two stitches as well. So that's a total of eight extra stitches at the end of each row. Now for row three, we're going to chain two and turn. Remember that two chains never count. Now here I'm going to work one of these herringbone stitches until I reach the stitch marker. So beginning on top of the first stitch right here, right on top, I'm going to make my first stitch and into the next same thing seven i have the chain space remove the stitch marker and in this chain space make a herringbone stitch chain one and one more now return the stitch marker to mark the corner. Always, always, don't forget. And now you're going to continue and work the next 12 stitches here for the first sleeve. And then you're going to make the second corner and then make 14 here for the back side. Make the third corner. Again, 12 for the second sleeve. Make the fourth corner and finish here with these last seven stitches for the second front panel. I'll meet you at the end of this third row. I'm here at the end of the third row. Now at the end of this third row, I have a total of 60 stitches. Here for the first front panel, I have eight stitches. Between this stitch marker and the next, I have 14 stitches. Between this stitch marker and the next, for the back side, I have 16. Between this stitch marker and the next, for the second sleeve, I have 14. And then here for the second from panel, I have eight. So that's a total of 60 stitches at the end of this third row. Now for the fourth row, we're going to repeat the same thing. I'm going to chain two and turn. Here I'm going to work one stitch for each one of these eight. So beginning on top of the first, make the first herringbone stitch. That's one. eight we have the first corner remove the stitch marker in this chain space make one herringbone stitch chain one and then another one in this same chain space and here's the corner now you're going to continue and do the same thing for the first sleeve you're going to make here a total of 14 then you're going to make the second corner for the back side, you're going to make 16. And then the third corner for the second sleeve, you're going to make 14. Then make the fourth corner and finish here with these last eight stitches for the second front panel. I'll meet you at the end of this fourth row. I'm here at the end of the fourth row. Now at the end of this fourth row, I have a total of 68 stitches. Beginning here with this first front panel, I have a total of nine stitches here. 
and between this stitch marker and the next i have 16 stitches for the first sleeve between this stitch marker and the next for the back side i have 18 stitches between this stitch marker and the next for the second sleeve there's 16 stitches and here at the end i have nine stitches now for row five we're going to do the same thing i'm going to chain two and i'm going to turn here i'm going to work one stitch on each one of these nine beginning on top of the first one so here's the first one into the next same thing nine here's the first corner remove the stitch marker and in this chain space make one stitch chain one and then another one in the same chain space. There, return your stitch marker to mark the corner. And then you're going to do the same thing here for this first sleeve. Here you're going to make 16, then the second corner, 18 for the back side, then the third corner, 16 for the second sleeve, the fourth corner and then finish here with these last nine stitches i'll meet you at the end of this fifth row i'm here at the end of the fifth row now at the end of this fifth row i have a total of 76 stitches beginning with this front panel here i have a total of 10 stitches then i have the first corner so between this corner and the next i have 18 stitches for the first sleeve between this corner and the next for the back side i have 20 stitches between this stitch marker and the next for the second sleeve i have 18 and here at the end i have 10 stitches so that's a total of 76 stitches at the end of this fifth row now you're going to continue on your own and work a couple more rows exactly in the same way how i showed you here making sure to make the corners in the same way how i showed you so here for row six chain two and turn beginning on top of the first stitch make your first herringbone stitch and continue with the next here's the first corner remove the stitch marker and make a stitch here then chain one and make another one here's the first corner return your stitch marker in the chain space and then continue for this sleeve you're going to do 18 then make the second corner for the back side you're going to make 20 then make the third corner for the second sleeve you're going to make 18 then make the fourth corner and finish here with these last 10 stitches and that's how you're going to continue for row six at the end of the sixth row you're going to have 84 stitches and continue watching i will let you know how many more rows i'm going to do so i will meet you at the end of that row and i will also give you a stitch count after this sixth row so continue watching i finished making the yoke i did a total of eight rows here for the yoke the last row that we did together was row six and at the end of the sixth row you were going to have 84 stitches 11 stitches for each one of the front panels 20 stitches for each one of the sleeves and 22 stitches for the back side then i went ahead and did the seventh row at the end of the seventh row i had 92 stitches each one of the front panels had 12 stitches each one of the sleeves had 22 stitches and for the back side i had 24 stitches so 92 stitches at the end of the seventh row 
Now I'm at the end of the eighth row and at the end of this eighth row I have a total of 100 stitches. Each one of the front panels has 13 stitches, each one of the sleeves has 24 stitches, and for the back side I have 26 stitches. So I only did two more rows after we did the sixth row. So I did a total of eight rows. Now I have placed a stitch marker here to mark the front of the little sweater. So from here on, this is going to be the front side and this is going to be the inside of the little sweater. So I placed a stitch marker. So row eight was worked on the wrong side. Now in the next row, we're going to divide the sleeves. This is going to be row one and this row is going to be worked on the right side. So here I'm going to chain two and I'm going to turn. Now here I'm going to work these 13 stitches. So beginning on top of the first stitch, I'm going to make the first one. So that's one, Thirteen. There, I have 13 stitches here. One thing I forgot to mention, the measurement here of the yoke depth, it's measuring about three and a half inches, which is about nine centimeters. I forgot to mention that before we started here. Now to separate the first sleeve, remove this stitch marker. Now here in this first corner, I'm going to make three stitches. That's one, two, three. Now to separate the first sleeve, chain three. I'm going to skip these 24 stitches and in the second corner here, remove the stitch marker and make three stitches. That's one, two, three. Now I'll continue along for the back side and work these 26 stitches, I will meet you right here. This is the third corner to show you how we're going to separate the second sleeve. I finished making these 26 stitches for the back side. Now in this third corner, I'm going to remove the stitch marker and I'm going to make three stitches here. Now to separate the second sleeve, chain three, skip these 24 stitches and inside this fourth corner, I'm going to make three stitches. That's one, two, three. Now continue along and finish these last 13 stitches. I will meet you at the end of this first row. I finished the first row. This is where we have separated the sleeves. Now at the end of this row, I have a total of 70 stitches, including the chains. Each one of the front panels has 16 stitches. And for the back side, I have 32 stitches. And then under each sleeve, I have three stitches. So that's a total of 70 stitches at the end of this first row, including the chains. Now for the second row, I'm going to chain two and here I'm going to turn. Now for this second row, all I'm going to do is one stitch for each one of these 16 stitches of the front panels here, beginning on top of the first, I'm going to make the first stitch and I'm going to continue like this until I come to the chains here under the first sleeve. I will meet you right here to show you how we're going to work the chains under the sleeves. I finished making these 16 stitches for the first front panel. I have the three chains under the first sleeve. Now into the first chain, I'm going to make an increase. So here I'm going to make two of these stitches. That's one and two into the first chain. Now in the second chain, just make one. In the third chain, make two.
so you should have five stitches here under the sleeve that's two three four five now continue along and work these 32 stitches for the back side and when you come here to the chains under the second sleeve you're going to do the same thing you're going to make two in the first chain then one stitch in the second chain and then two stitches in the third chain and then continue and finish the last 16 stitches i will meet you at the end of this second row i'm here at the end of this second row at the end of this second row i have a total of 74 stitches from here on we're always going to have 74 stitches now for row three and on you're just going to chain two and turn from now on we're just going to continue and work one stitch for each one of these stitches until we have the length here of the body of the sweater now for this third row beginning on top of the first stitch i'm going to make the first stitch here the first herringbone stitch into the next make the next one into the next another one and so on for this row this is all i'm going to do one stitch for each one of these stitches and at the end of this third row i'm going to have 74 stitches and that's how you're going to continue and just repeat that third row over and over until we have the length here of the body of the little sweater i'm not sure how many rows i'm going to do but continue watching i will let you know exactly how many rows i'm going to do so continue and i'll meet you at the end of that row I finished the body of the little sweater i did a total of 16 rows so from here where we separated the sleeves up to here i have 17 rows we have two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen rows the last row that i did was worked on the wrong side now for row 17 i'm going to do one row here for the hem uh, but before that let me give you the measurement from the top of the shoulder to the end of the last row it's measuring about 24.5 centimeters, which is about 9.75 inches. Now, if you want to make this part here longer or shorter, you can. That would be up to you. You can always add more rows. Just make sure that the next row that you do, it's worked on the right side, um, just like we're going to do here for row 17 of the hem. So let's start here. I'm going to chain two and I'm going to turn. So for row 17, I'm going to start with a double crochet on top of the first stitch. Now into the next, right here, I'm going to work a front post double crochet, back post double crochet into the next, front post double crochet into the next, and so on. And this is how I'm going to continue for row 17. So continue like this, finish row 17. I will meet you here at this other end to show you what we need to do next. I'm here at the end of row 17. This is the row here for the hem. In this row I did front post and back post double crochets. Now here at the end on top of the last stitch, make a double crochet. And this is how I finish this row, row 17 with, with a total of 74 stitches. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to work the left front panel. I'm going to start here with this front panel and it's going to be worked on the right side. So to begin here, I'm going to chain one and right along the very edge of row 17, I have the last double crochet that I did. So here I'm going to make two half double crochets. That's one and that's two. Now at the end of the previous row, so row 16 right here, I'm going to make one. So insert your hook into that chain two and make one half double crochet. Now into the next row we have a double crochet or um, one of the stitches um, herringbone stitch so here make two into the next make one into the next two that's how i'm going to continue all the way to the top one into the next row then two into the next row here we want to make sure not to make too many of these half double crochets otherwise this part here is going to be too loose into the next two and so on that's how i'm going to continue 
two, then one, two, one, two, one, all the way to the top. I will meet you right here and I'll tell you how many half double crochets I have for this front panel and then I'll show you what we need to do next for the second row. I'm here at the top of this first row of half double crochets along this um, side of the front panel. This is the left side. I'm here at the top. I have my last two half double crochets here into this last row or the first row here for the yoke. I'm going to make one more and I'm going to go here into this chain like this so now i have a total of 39 half double crochets at the end of this row now if you have one or two stitches less or more it's okay the important thing is that when you do the other side you make the same number of stitches now for row two i'm going to chain one and i'm going to turn the second row is being worked on the wrong side so here on top of this first stitch make a half double crochet now into the second one the next one i'm going to make a front post half double crochet into the next back post half double crochet into the next front post half double crochet back post half double crochet into the next and front post half double crochet into the next and so on this is how i'm going to continue for this second row just alternating between a front post and a back post half double crochet now make sure that these um, stitches here for the second row the front post and back post stitches are nice and loose so that this part here is nice and straight so continue like this i will meet you here at the end of the second row I finished the second row now here at the end on top of the last stitch I did a half double crochet I cut my yarn and passed my yarn through this last loop and this side here is done and this is how it looks I just did two rows one row of half double crochets then the second row was front post and back post half double crochets and at the end of each row I had 39 stitches now what we're going to do next is we're going to go here to the right side and we're going to start from the top down so here to begin we have the row of chains so in this row of chains I'm going to make a half double crochet but first I'm going to grab a loop here bring it through I'm going to chain one and then make a half double crochet here in this row of chains now as I did for the other side in this row I did two half double crochets and then in the next I did one two half double crochets on the next and then one on the next row and that's how I'm going to continue just alternating between one two one two all the way down to the end here I will meet you right here at the end of this first row to show you what we need to do next I'm here at the end of this first row for the second front panel I have 39 stitches now for the second row chain one and turn beginning on top of the first stitch make a half double crochet now into the next make a front post half double crochet into the next back post half double crochet and so on for this second row this is all i'm going to do just alternate between a front post and a back post half double crochet just like i did for the first front panel continue i will meet you up here at the end to show you how we're going to work the neckline i finished the second row here for the second front panel i have 39 stitches so this front panel is done now we're going to continue along the neckline here and we're going to work this row of the neckline on the wrong side so to do this here i'm going to begin by making one chain and then at the end of this second row where i did the last stitch i'm going to make a half double crochet now half double crochet at the end of the next row or the first row that we did here for the second front panel so here i have two half double crochets now i have the next stitch here for the neckline beginning here i'm going to work a front post half double crochet now into the next back post half double crochet front post half double crochet into the next and so on make sure that these stitches are nice and loose so that the neckline here is not too tight um, if you 
prefer to do just a row of half double crochets, you can do that too instead of working front post and back post half double crochets. I am making sure that my stitches are nice and loose, that way the neckline won't be too tight. Now continue, finish this row, I'll meet you here at this other end. Okay, I'm here at the end, I'm almost done with this row all around the neckline. This last stitch that I have here is a front post and I have these last two stitches here at the end. These are the two rows that we did for the front panel. So here, I'm just going to make a half double crochet on top of each one. So that's one, and here at the end, along the very edge, I'm going to make the last one. Now I've cut my yarn, so I'm just going to pass my yarn through this last loop, and this is how I finish this row all around the neckline. I have a total of 46 half double crochets for the neckline. If you have one or two stitches less or more, it's okay. The important thing here is the, the neckline is not too small. Make sure that when you do these stitches, they're nice and loose. You can also just make half double crochets all around. Now, this part here is done, the front panels along with the neckline. If you notice, I did not make any buttonholes and that is because the spaces in between the rows of half double crochets, um, this one here are big enough for buttons to fit through. Normally with a 3.5 millimeter hook, I use um, 12, 13, or even 14 millimeter size. At the end of the tutorial, once I finish the sweater and I add my buttons, I'll let you know what size buttons I'm going to use. If you're using a smaller or bigger hook size, try your buttons and make sure that they fit through this hole that is left between these um, two rows of front post and back post half double crochet. So like right here, you can see that hole that is left now this little sweater is for boys so what i'm going to do is i'm going to place my buttons on this side and i'm going to use this side for my button holes if it's for girls that you're making this for then you're going to do the opposite you're going to use this side for your button holes and then place your buttons on this side now if you're making this for a baby where you don't know the sex then just do it like i'm going to do it so buttons are going to go here and this side is going to be for button holes now what we're going to do next is the sleeves i already did this side so when you do this side you're going to do it exactly in the same way how i'm going to show you here um, on this side so we're going to go right here this is the left side we're going to go right here right under the sleeve remember we added three chains so i'm going to insert my hook right in the center stitch so right there so i have one chain here on this side and one on this side so insert the hook there grab a loop bring it through chain one and here make a double crochet now I'm going to make a double crochet decrease into these next two stitches into the chain that's next to the middle one so right here insert your hook grab a loop take two loops off leave two loops on the hook yarn over then go here into this stitch that's the last stitch that we did as we separated the sleeves so insert your hook there into that space grab a loop take two loops off three loops on the hook close here's the double crochet decrease now i'm going to go into the first stitch out of the how many did we leave for the sleeve out of the 24 that we left for the sleeve so insert your hook here and make your first herringbone stitch the only two double crochets that I have are these two that I did. I decided to make these into double crochets and not the stitch. So now I'm just going to continue all around the sleeve and make these 24 herringbone stitches. Continue. I will meet you here at this other end. This is the last stitch out of the 24. And then I'll show you how we're going to finish this first row for the first sleeve. I'm here at the end of this first row for the first sleeve. Now up to here, which is the last stitch out of the 24 that we had left for the sleeve, I have 26 stitches, including the two that we did here at the beginning. So now to finish, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this space. This is the last stitch that we have when we separated the sleeves. So in that space, insert your hook, grab a loop, take two loops off, leave two loops on the hook, yarn over again, and then I'm going to go here where I have the chain right there. I'm going to grab a loop, take two loops off, three loops on the hook, 
close. Here's a double crochet decrease. So now at the end of this first row, I have a total of 27 stitches. I have 24 of the herringbone stitches and I have the double crochet in the center and then two double crochet decreases on both sides. Now to finish, you're going to go on top of the first stitch and make a slip stitch. And here's the first row. Now this first row was worked on the right side. So the second row is going to be worked on the wrong side. So chain two and turn. Now here to begin, we're always going to go back to the same stitch that we joined to. So it's right here, not here because this stitch that's right in front of the chains is actually the slip stitch. So we're going to go right here. So slightly to the back so yarn over here and just insert your hook here and grab a loop here we're going to start with the herringbone stitch take one loop off take one loop off take two loops off here's the first herringbone stitch now if you have a hard time making this first stitch then you can always start with a double crochet and then just join to the double crochet at the end of the row. For me, I'm going to always make the first stitch as a herringbone stitch. Remember that two chains will never count. Now into each one of these stitches, I'm going to make one of these stitches, a herringbone stitch. And at the end of this second row, I'm going to have 27 stitches. From here on, I'm always going to have 27 stitches. Now continue like this all around for this second row. I will meet you here at the end to show you once again how to start and how to finish each row from here on, since you're going to continue on your own and finish the sleeve. I'm here at the end of this second row. I have 27 of these stitches. Now to finish each row from here on, you're just going to go on top of the first stitch and make a slip stitch. And this is how I finish the second row with 27 stitches. Like I said, from here on, we're always going to have 27 of these stitches. And to begin each row, you always chain two and turn. And here to begin, you always have to make sure to start into the same stitch that you joined. So it's this stitch right here. If you go into this stitch that's in front of the chains, then you're going to be adding stitches at the end of each row and you don't want to do that. So go to this stitch here and start your row by making your first stitch here. And then into each one of the stitches, you make a herringbone stitch. And that's how you're going to continue for the rest of this second row. Now to finish, you always go on top of the first stitch, join with a slip stitch, chain two and turn. Remember the two chains never count. The stitches that we're counting are the actual stitches that we're making here, not the chains. And for the sleeve here, we're going to do a total of, um, let's see, I did 15 rows here. So from here up to here, there's 15 rows. And then I did one row here for the cuff. So continue. Let's make these 15 rows and then I'll come back and show you how to make the cuff. I did a total of 15 rows here for the sleeve. Now row 15 was worked on the right side. For row 16, we're going to make one row here for the cuff where I did front post and back post half double crochet. So we're going to do the same thing here. So to begin row 16, I'm going to chain one. Row 16 is also going to be worked on the right side. So here beginning with this first stitch, I'm going to start with a front post half double crochet into the next back post half double crochet front post half double crochet into the next and so on this is how i'm going to continue for row 16. Um, one thing i forgot to mention if you want to make your sleeve longer you can um, just make sure that the last row that you make it's also worked on the right side so that the row here for the cuff is also worked on the right side and that's how we're going to continue for this last row i'm going to go ahead and finish this row and then um, you can go ahead and just finish the other sleeve but you're going to do it exactly in the same way so i'll come back after i am done to show you the finished sweater I finished making the cuff at the end of this 16th row where I did front post and back post half double crochets. I just joined to the beginning with a slip stitch, cut my yarn and pass my yarn through this last loop and the sleeve is all done. Now you're going to do exactly the same thing we did here for this sleeve. You're going to do it here on this side. It's done exactly in the same way. So here's the finished little sweater. This is how it looks. I went ahead and attached my buttons. Now I used five of these buttons. These are 
12 millimeter size, but you can also use 13 millimeter size. I tried 13 millimeter and they easily fit through this hole that's between the rows of half double crochets that we did for the front panels. So that's all I did. And here's a little sweater. Now, let me give you the finished measurement from the top of the shoulder to the end of the sleeve. It's measuring about nine inches, which is about 22.5 centimeters from under the sleeve to the end of the sleeve. It's measuring about 5.25 inches, which is about 13.5 centimeters. Now the sleeve width, just the, the top, it's measuring about 3.25 inches, which is about eight centimeters. Now the length from the top of the shoulder to the end here of the hem, it's measuring about 10 inches, which is about 25.5 centimeters. This measurement here, right across the yoke depth, it's measuring about 4.5 inches, which is about 11.5 centimeters. Now the chest measurement, just the top, it's measuring about 8.75 inches, which is about 22 centimeters. So based on these measurements, this little cardigan sweater coat or jacket is for boys and girls between zero and three months. Now you can easily make it smaller or bigger from a newborn size and up to 12 months. Down here in the information box, I'll go ahead and leave you some information on how you can easily make it smaller or bigger. So be sure to check that out. And as always, if you prefer a written pattern, check out my Etsy shop. I'll leave the link to my Etsy shop in the information box below. Now to make this little sweater, I used exactly 100 grams of DK weight yarn. At the beginning of the video, I showed you the yarn that I used. So here's the little sweater. Comment below and let me know if you want me to make the matching little pants or little socks. I'll gladly go ahead and do that for you all. Okay, so this was today's tutorial. I hope you like it. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.